Hello and welcome to this A-level psychology video on Rusbolt's investment model. As usual, we are going to spend the first six or seven minutes going over the outline before having a look at the evaluation points and then finishing off with an example essay outline so you can see how all of this would fit together in around 250 words or so. So Rusbolt's investment model is one of four theories of romantic relationships, together with social exchange theory, equity theory, and Duck's phase model. So that means that if you ever get an essay question that looks something like this, Rusbolt's investment model is something that you can talk about because, like I said, it is one of the four theories of romantic relationships. Also, on this note, if you ever get an essay question that is outline and evaluate one or more of something, or two or more of something, it's not a trick question. You can get full marks by outlining just one if it says one or more, or two when it says two or more. Just make sure you're always writing about the minimum required theories. So the investment model suggests that the success of a romantic relationship rests on the level of commitment that the partners have to the relationship. And commitment is defined as a romantic partner's intention or desire to continue a relationship, reflecting a belief that the relationship has a viable long-term future. Now, the model suggests that commitment depends on three individual factors, which you can see in the diagram here. And we're going to go over each of the factors in the next couple of slides, but two of the three should already look familiar to you from social exchange theory. So let's have a look at these three factors. Satisfaction is based on the concept of the comparison level. So it's judged by comparing rewards and costs. And a satisfying relationship is one where there are many rewards, for example, support, fun, companionship, sex, and so on, and very few costs. So, for example, conflict, anxiety, compromise, that kind of stuff. The idea is that partners are generally satisfied in a relationship if they're getting more out of the relationship than they expect to, based on previous relationships and social norms, for example. The second factor is comparison with alternatives. And we've already seen this in social exchange theory, and this factor is all about romantic partners asking themselves whether their needs could be better met outside of their current relationship. Are the alternatives more rewarding and less costly? And the alternatives include not just other relationships, but also the possibility of having no romantic relationship at all. And then the third and arguably the most important factor is the level of investment. Now, investment refers to anything that we would stand to lose if the relationship were to end. And it was added to the model because Rusbolt realized that satisfaction and comparison with alternatives weren't enough to explain commitment. Because if they were, a lot of relationships would end as soon as the costs started to outweigh the rewards, or as soon as more attractive alternatives presented themselves. But that is, in fact, not very often the case. Now, there are two types of investment. You've got intrinsic investment and extrinsic investments. And these can both be tangible and intangible. So intrinsic investments are things that have been put directly into the relationship. Tangible examples are things like money, possessions, whereas intangible examples would be things like energy, emotions, self-disclosure, that type of stuff. Okay, so bearing that in mind, tangible effectively means material things, so things that you can touch, whereas intangible are things that are a little bit more abstract and you can't really quantify. Extrinsic investments are things that didn't previously exist in the relationship, but are now closely associated with it. So, tangible investments are things like jointly bought items, like a car, or a house, or mutual friends that you've gained whilst being in the relationship, 
or children that exist because of the relationship. Whereas intangible examples of extrinsic investments are things like shared memories. Okay, so again, very abstract. You can't really quantify shared memories, but you would lose the opportunity to create shared memories if the relationship were to end. So if we put all of those things together, we can say that if partners in a relationship experience high levels of satisfaction with less attractive alternatives, and they have an increasing level of investment, then we can confidently say that partners will be committed to the relationship, and that means that the relationship will continue. Obviously, if everything were switched around, so low levels of satisfaction with high quality of alternatives and low or decreasing amounts of investment, then the relationship would be more likely to end. Okay, so just before we move on to the evaluation points, I just want to make sure that you understand that the main psychological factor that keeps people in a romantic relationship is not satisfaction, but it is commitment. And that's a really important distinction because it can help us to explain why dissatisfied partners stay in relationships because they feel like they are committed to that relationship. They have a high level of investment. And like I just said previously, investment is the most important thing. So they feel like they've invested a lot and they don't want to see that go to waste. They might have children together. They might have a house together. They might have all of their finances being joint and all of this. They don't want to see that go to waste. And so people will work hard to maintain and repair a relationship and push through any rough patches that they might be experiencing. Okay, so we'll have a look at the end of the video to see how all of this can come together in a six mark outline. But for now, those are your outline points. And we're now going to have a quick look at the evaluation section. So the first evaluation point is a strength. It is research support provided by Lee and Agnew from 2003. It was a meta-analysis that was done and they reviewed 52 studies, which together included around 11,000 participants from five different countries. And they found that satisfaction, comparison with alternatives and investment size all predicted relationship commitment. And they found that relationships in which commitment was the greatest were the most stable and lasted the longest. And those outcomes were true for both men and women across all cultures in the analysis. It was also true for homosexual as well as heterosexual couples. So that suggests that there is a validity to Roosevelt's claim and that these factors are universally important features of romantic relationships. However, a counterpoint to that Lee and Agnew research is that it is correlational research. And although strong correlations have been found between all the important factors predicted by the model, unfortunately, correlational research doesn't allow us to conclude that the factors identified cause commitment. Okay, so yes, we have a strong correlation, but that does not mean that one causes the other. It could be, for example, that the more committed you feel towards your partner, the more investment you are willing to make in the relationship. So the direction of causality might actually be the other way round, as that's suggested by the model. Therefore, it's possible that the model hasn't identified the causes of commitment, but rather has identified factors that are associated with it. And that is a really important distinction to be able to make. It hasn't told us anything about cause and effect. It's just told us something about what is associated with commitment. Moving on, another strength of Rusbot's investment model is that it can explain why people remain in relationships that could be seen as having very low levels of satisfaction. For example, abusive relationships. Now in 1955, Rusbolt and Mart studied women at a domestic abuse refuge and found that those most likely to return to an abusive partner were those who reported having made the greatest investments to the relationship and having fewest attractive alternatives. Now all of these women were dissatisfied with their relationships 
but they were still committed to them due to the level of investment that they had made. Therefore, the model shows that satisfaction on its own can't explain why people stay in relationships. Things like investment, which then leads to commitment, are also important factors. And then finally, a limitation of the model is that it views investments in a very simplistic, one-dimensional way. So research by Goodfried and Agnew from 2008 point out that there is more to investment than just the resources that you've already put into a relationship or that exist because of the relationship. Because in the early stages of a relationship, partners make very few actual investments to the relationship. The model, therefore, has been extended to include the investments that partners plan to make in the future. They are motivated to commit to each other because they want to see their plans that they've made for the future work out. And this is something that the original model didn't include. It didn't consider the plans that people made together and didn't see these plans as investments for the future. So that means that the original model is limited because it fails to recognize the true complexity of investment, especially how planning for the future influences commitment. And that is something that the model has now been extended to include. Okay. Right, so before we finish off, let's just have a quick look at a six mark outline for Rusbot's investment model. So, as usual, I start off with a little bit of an introduction just to kind of lay the groundwork a little bit. It's not much, it's just a sentence so that the examiner can see what it is that you're going to be talking about. I've then got a paragraph on each of the factors. So you've got satisfaction, comparison with alternatives, and investment as well. As you can see, they haven't got the same amount of detail given to all of them. So comparison with alternatives has got the least said about it, whereas investment has got the most said about it. I've included examples in both the satisfaction paragraph and the investment paragraph, but there are no examples in the comparison with alternatives paragraph. So I've got a little bit of a trade-off there, but overall it gives me a good account of what the theory actually is. I then finish off with a closing statement that effectively just brings it all together and says that high levels of satisfaction with low quality of alternatives and high levels of investment allows us to confidently predict that partners will be committed to the relationship and the relationship will continue. Okay, so it's a fairly standard outline. There's nothing massively groundbreaking there. However, the one thing that people may struggle with a little bit is that it is quite long because there's quite a lot of things to say. So what's on the screen now is around 250 words which isn't horribly long. It's about what you would expect for a lot of the year 13 topics. However, if you are going to struggle to write all of this in the allotted time, then you could, of course, cut that down a little bit and you could get rid of the things that I've put in red. Those are mainly the examples. Now, it's one of those things where I like to have examples in there because it just gives a little bit of detail and gives a little bit of extra depth. However, if you know that you're going to struggle with the outline, if it's quite long, then those are the things that I would probably get rid of. And I would just accept that I might take a hit on the marks. So I might lose a mark or so if you get rid of all of the examples. However, that being said, if getting rid of the examples means that you then get to write an extra evaluation point at the end, then obviously you'll make up that mark later on and then hopefully, you know, it should all even out at the end, okay? Obviously, ideally, you would get it all in, but this is just what I would suggest if it was me, okay? So, that is the end of the video and the end of Roosevelt's investment theory. I hope it's been useful and I hope it's all made sense. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next one.